Okay, so we're here at the National Weather Service Chicago Station in Romeoville, and I was wondering if you could just explain maybe how your Doppler radar works and what information that sends back to the Weather Center and how you use that information to inform the public. Right, the Doppler radar is an amazing piece of, of technology, and all National Weather Service offices are co-located with a Doppler radar. Okay. A Doppler radar sends out pulses of electromagnetic energy okay. very rapidly. They strike targets and they're reflected back to a radar receiver. Computers then process that information and plot it on a map for meteorologists to interrogate and analyze. <laughs> the data that comes back to us is quite a bit about the targets. Uh, some of the information is uh, just the power that's reflected back, and that tells us the intensity of the rain, the hail, or the snow that is falling. Also, the difference between pulses of energy tells us a phase shift, and from that we can uh, determine which way and how fast particles are moving. In other words, the winds within a thunderstorm. And that allows meteorologists to determine if a storm is rotating, for instance, okay. if it has strong wind capability. And so that's very important to the warning decision making process for meteorologists. We also have the ability, due to an upgrade of the radar uh, two to three years ago, it was called dual polarization to tell characteristics about the precipitation okay. particles. We can tell the shapes and the structures of uh, precipitation particles, and uh, from that we can determine more than likely if the precipitation is liquid, if it's frozen, if it's a combination between the two, if it's biological, for instance, uh, insects or birds, or we can see if there is debris, for instance, debris okay. from a tornado. That has been shown in numerous cases already since this upgrade two years ago uh, to prove very helpful to National Weather Service National warning Weather Service. forecasters to definitely say this storm is very likely producing a tornado as it has what we call a debris ball at times and we can see the debris being lofted. For instance, during the November 17th tornado outbreak where we had a long-lived supercell thunderstorm, as we call it, that went from near Peoria, across the town of Washington, all the way up into the south metro of Chicago, that produced five tornadoes, including the Washington tornado. The debris from Washington was seen on oh, radar wow. uh, for many, many miles, in fact, all the way up to Chicago uh, with that storm. But particularly when we saw the debris very concentrated at times, we could tell that there was very likely a tornado on the ground. Okay. And about how far does your radar range go here at the National Weather Service Chicago? The radar uh, energy goes out uh, over 200 miles. Okay. However, as you get further from the radar, the earth curves. So our beam ends up being higher from the ground uh, when that's the case. Okay. And so then we can tell less and less characteristics of the low levels of the storm. So the radar data becomes less usable, especially when you get out over uh, over 100 miles, it okay. becomes less and less usable. So uh, we are able to use neighboring radar data as well as ours together. Uh, for instance, radar data from the National Weather Service offices in Lincoln, Quad Cities, or Indianapolis, or Milwaukee, for instance. And we can pull that up on our computer monitors and put that with ours and, and make more of a complete picture. And so uh, the radar data really is, is uh, very good uh, with Basically 100 miles. Okay, and how can people, you know, if they're out out and about uh, with their smartphone, um, I know that the National Weather Service has the radar on the internet. How can people access the um, specifically the Chicago radar stream? Yeah, the National Weather Service uh, radar is located in Romeoville for the Chicago land and northern Illinois area. The radar data is available on our website, weather.gov/chicago. Our radar data is put out there free of charge, so there are many private sources, including private weather entities, that repackage it up and uh, use it in apps mm -hmm. and other websites. Broadcast media, of course, distributes it, and that's excellent. That's exactly what we want. We want our data distributed and out there. And so there are many apps uh, from private vendors that, that people can download to have that. We do caution that uh, radar data is tough to understand and analyze mm, right. for the non-trained eye. Okay. And so it is really recommended to understand what's going on uh, for meteorologists to diagnose that. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. And the radar, what you see right now, it will change greatly in just 10 to 15 minutes. It's right. not something you can easily extrapolate. And that's right. just because of how the environment works. And it's not, um, 
is there a bit of a delay um, from the uploaded image? Is it, I know it, I've looked at it online. It, it will give you the time of the last update. Right. Our radar scans in times of severe weather, it's basically making a whole volume scan in about four and a half minutes. So the radar data you'll see online a lot of applications will update about every four and a half minutes. There can be a delay from when that data is processed and disseminated to the public. It's usually a very short delay. We, of course, in here will see it a little before the public as, it, as our, our radar is right outside the data comes right mm -hmm. here first uh, before it's processed and, and disseminated. The exciting upgrade that's coming with radar, um, in fact, it's, it's being integrated across the country right now, is that the lowest scan, the scan closest to the ground, we will be scanning that more frequently than four and a half minutes coming up this, uh, this, uh, this year. Now we won't always do that, we'll do that in, in situations where the storms are, are uh, uh, close enough, so to say, to be, to be able to be analyzed like that, um, but we will be uh, then disseminating that information at the lowest radar angle basically uh, around every two minutes. Okay. So that'll be a lot more frequent updates, uh, which will be helpful, especially to our key partners of broadcast meteorologists and emergency management. Awesome. Thank you. Yep.